I can start off this review by singing, but I actually want you to stick around. So Beauty is the new drama on Netflix that was written by Lena Waithe. This has a big musical angle to the story, but is it worthy of your time? A gifted young woman struggles to maintain her voice and identity after being offered a lucrative recording contract, setting off a fierce battle between her family, the label, and her girlfriend to determine who will guide her as she journeys to becoming a star. Now, this is a quiet but musical story that follows our protagonist, Beauty, as she navigates familial relationships while pursuing her singing career. Now, when I say musical, I mean, don't think singing and dancing. The music comes from just a ton of seen and heard performances by musical artists like Mahalia Jackson, Ella Fitzgerald, and Donna Summer. These not only set the backdrop for who Beauty looks up to as influences, but also help to craft the tone for part of the story. The most potent part of this story for me was watching Beauty standing in the studio with her headphones on in front of a microphone. Now, she's getting ready to sing, but remembering all that brought her to this point. The hesitation, emotion, passion, and even pain, they're all on display in her eyes. Beauty is played by Gracie Marie Bradley, and she crafts a character that is timid, confident, strong, and exploited. I mean, you're probably like, wait, uh, that's kind of contradict each other. And they do. But Beauty is a character with a complex situation leading to complex emotions. Now, this is a really sad story. Like, put you in the bell chart type of sad. The unhappiness and dysfunction of Beauty's family, I think they're oppressive. From the very beginning, there's an uneasiness within the story. It's ill-defined, but it's present. There's this tone to the narrative that puts our teeth on edge because of how the characters are immediately tense. Like, they're gearing up for a fight, but knowing it's probably one that they're not going to win. The first 20-ish minutes of this hour and 40 minute movie are choppy in their storytelling. Now, while I don't expect to know what all is going on in such a short time, it's hard to follow the events and get an understanding of where this is trying to lead us. The relationship between Beauty and her family, it's uncomfortable at best. I mean, it's emotionally abusive and hard to watch, especially because we don't get a lot of context for why each of her family members is the way they are. Her dad has acted wonderfully, played by Giancarlo Esposito. He's quietly menacing and extremely creepy. And there's narcissism at play, but also this fierceness that instantly makes us need to keep an eye on him. I mean, he's controlling and mean, and Esposito is the perfect choice to play such a villain. But he's one with charisma. I mean, he's captivating to watch, even though I hate the character. Niecy Nash plays Beauty's mom, and there is a crazy dynamic between the two. The mom is an almost-was singer. She has some fame or maybe notoriety, but not to the level that she wanted or that she thinks she deserves. She's a talented gospel singer, but she never made it huge. All her dreams, aspirations, hurts, betrayals, I mean, even suspicions are thrust onto Beauty, which has a very antagonistic tone, especially because it typically has some religious undertone or bent to it. Now, the mom isn't necessarily a villain, but she certainly comes across as one, just like the dad, making it very hard to like her or her approach. Now, Nash creates a vibrant character, one that can be relatable, but is certainly hard to get behind. Then we have Sharon Stone playing the prospective manager for Beauty. She's smarmy and slimy, but in a sing-song way. I mean, hoping that if she speaks sweetly, the venom of her words and her actions aren't going to be picked up on. The psychological manipulation that's at play from Stone, it was angering and tough to watch, especially because Beauty is a bit timid. She just hasn't found her voice of strength yet, so she's pushed around by just every authority figure in her life. The family dynamic in this is really uncomfortable. I mean, the words the characters use imply they're supportive of Beauty and then her musical pursuits, but the actions and their behaviors totally counteract those. As I said before, the family is dysfunctional, but if I'm correct in one of the scenarios, some characters move beyond dysfunction into harm. And it's not a mistake at the names of their brothers either. Both are egged on by their father and neither truly are valued for who they are. Now, an action is alluded to between the brothers, but it's never really addressed afterwards, which also kind of matches a lot of this story. What we watch feels like short snippets of thoughts, like vignettes or maybe scenes that just jump around on the timeline. I mean, they're pretty much always moving forward, but they don't feel totally cohesive. The cinematography and visual storytelling are beautiful to take in. The setting is the early-ish 80s, and so the color palettes are a bit subdued. You got browns, greens, I mean, even reds. And then they're typically in the deeper hues of those colors rather than being bright and shiny. That's not to say that there aren't those also, but the colors overall, they are toned down. This comes across as a very artsy film. Now, we get a lot of action that is shown in sort of a contemplative way, but music and soundtrack overtake any dialogue, so we're not actually hearing the words of the characters being spoken. And that's what carries a lot of this storytelling. 
There are powerful moments of dialogue exchange and some even intense relational conversations, but we also just have to imagine what was being said or sung in a lot of those situations. Now, this film really feels like it could have debuted at a film festival. I mean, it's got the stylistics of a festival darling, but the story presentation felt meandering and choppy. Now, I know what is being communicated, but because of how it's all put together, I struggle to feel connected to the characters, even though the acting is awesome. Bradley as beauty really does give a wonderful performance. She's riding the line constantly of trying to please everyone, and yet in the middle of that, find herself. I mean, she's confronted with different relationship possibilities and then struggles to determine how she's gonna proceed. We get the sense that she does know what she wants, but there are moments that showcase some doubt or maybe they're questioning, and not just within a romantic relationship either, but in all of her interactions. We're witnessing a young woman come into her own and begin to determine for herself what and who she wants to be. And I think the film captures the uncertainty of youth really well, and it also looks at what price somebody's willing to pay for success. It's rough to watch Beauty betray herself. Through every turn, as she progresses into her musical career, she has to deny that she's a lesbian. Every detail about her life becomes dictated to her, but there are pieces of dialogue that she eventually strikes back with. There's a point where Beauty is told what looks good based on research, but then she bites back about how research is dictated by those in power telling others what they should like. I mean, it's a quick exchange, but it shows Beauty's mind and her strength. So overall, Beauty is a beautiful film to watch. The imagery really establishes a lot of the tone, whether that be with Giancarlo Esposito waving his lit cigar or Gracie Marie Bradley sitting on a bed with headphones on listening to one of her musical idols. The acting is awesome to watch with characters being crafted that put us on edge and make interactions incredibly tense. But when all is said and done, the film feels like it's a series of small ideas that are pieced together without many transitions, like we're watching just a bunch of vignettes smashed together hoping something cohesive will be created. I couldn't feel connected to the characters or Beauty's journey, even though I understood what her path entailed. There's no sex or nudity, but a lot of profanity and just a bit of violence. I give Beauty three out of five couches. So who are your musical influences, or maybe what type of music do you typically enjoy? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.